Hello my spooky friends! Today we're going to be continuing on with the American Horror Story in Real Life series. Today we're talking about the Cecil Hotel. This is about to get real creepy, so buckle up and let's hop right on in. I believe this is week five of the American Horror Story in Real Life series that I'm doing here for Spooky Sunday on my channel. And we have something that is really interesting to talk about today. A lot of people know about this, and this involves season five of American Horror Story, which was Hotel. Now, a lot of you might already know this, but Hotel was basically based off of a real hotel that's in Los Angeles right now that had so many strange and bizarre and paranormal and just weird offhanded things happen to it. But in American Horror Story, hotel there's a bunch of characters that go through things that real people in the actual hotel went through and there's a few characters that we're going to be talking about today and some real life events that Ryan Murphy based those characters or those character traits on so just a little brief overview of American Horror Story Hotel before we get started with the characters and the real life events season 5 is about vampires ghosts a hotel Lady Gaga but basically there is a hotel called the Hotel Cecil that is based in Los Angeles California and this hotel is unlike other other hotels because it has all sorts of paranormal happenings around it, more so than you would typically find at hotels. Anyone who dies in the hotel stays there as a ghost and cannot leave, but they appear to people as a physical manifestation, so basically they're like a physical ghost that you can touch, and they don't look like a ghost to the normal person. They just can't leave the hotel. They're stuck there forever. Then there is also Lady Gaga, who is a vampire, and there's all sorts of weird vampire stuff happening in the background while there's ghosts in the hotel as well. Now the Hotel Cecil has had all sorts of people come and go and stay the night and a lot of them actually ended up being serial killers in the show and spoiler alert here so if you haven't seen the show and you want to go ahead and skip forward 10 seconds but the main plot point in the show is that you're basically following this dude named John who is a detective and he's trying to figure out where all these murders are coming from and he ends up being the murderer who was staying in the hotel the whole time. It's a big M. Night Shyamalan-esque ending to the season. So the Hotel Cecil in season 5 is actually based on a real life hotel that you can go to and visit and stay the night at today. You can book a night stay there right now if you wanted to and that is the Stay on Main Hotel. Although many people who know about the hotel know it under its former name, the Hotel Cecil. So the Hotel Cecil has been around since 1920 and shortly after its opening it was actually hit by the Great Depression and unfortunately it was supposed to be a nice fancy hotel but they ended up having to basically give up their reputation. I feel like that sounds kind of mean but it's basically what they had to do and they had to accept anyone into the hotel even though they wanted to be high class. They had to just accept anyone in who needed to stay the night and there was a lot of people at the time who were out of jobs, who were out of money just because of the Great Depression. We all know how that went. So because the hotel needed to make ends meet and make the money that they basically spent on building the hotel they had to accept anyone in who wanted to stay the night and of course when you accept anyone in you basically open up the door to accepting in people who are selling drugs people who are involved in prostitution people who are involved in gangs people who are just involved in not so great things and around this time that area of LA actually started to descend into something that is pretty well known amongst people who live in the US that area of LA basically became what we now know as Skid Row now in American Horror Story you can definitely see some correlations between the Hotel Cecil and the Hotel Cortez. Obviously the names, but there's just a lot of people there who are doing drugs and doing bad things and, you know, just cheating on their wives and husbands. There's just a lot of shady stuff going on. Now there's one particular character named Sally who was played by Sarah Paulson, and she's basically a drug addict from the 90s who did heroin and did all sorts of drugs at the hotel, and she would go there with her boyfriend and basically just shoot up and do drugs. Not good things, my friend. Now she eventually ends up being pushed out of a window by her boyfriend's mom who is played by Kathy Bates who is one of my personal favorite American Horror Story actors. I freaking love that woman so much. She is amazing. Now transitioning over into the real life scenarios here that kind of inspired Sally. Obviously the drug usage is kind of like a little nod to the fact that back in the day back when the hotel basically first opened they had to just open it up to anyone and this included a lot of people who were using drugs. But one thing that a lot of people don't really connect is that her death and being pushed out of a window is actually connected to a bunch of deaths that have actually occurred at the Hotel Cecil. Now there was a bunch of ladies unfortunately who jumped out of the window and basically plummeted to their death or maybe was even pushed. We don't really know. There was one woman in the 1950s who jumped to her death and there was two women in the 1960s who also jumped to their death 
all from the Hotel Cecil's windows. And unfortunately, it doesn't stop there because in 1975, there was another woman who jumped from the windows of the Hotel Cecil, but she remains unidentified to this day, which is just absolutely terrible. So as you can see, Ryan Murphy definitely decided to put in inspiration from those poor unfortunate four ladies deaths into Sarah Paulson's character Sally because she was pushed from a window because unfortunately as you guys just heard there was a lot of people who met their tragic ends by falling from the windows of the Hotel Cecil. Now as I stated earlier in the American Horror Story season the Hotel Cortez was home to many serial killers and there was a bunch of serial killers that they went through that were all staying there at one time and it was a really interesting thing because these were all real serial killers. I mean, we had John Wayne Gacy that stayed there allegedly. We had Eileen Warnos. We had Jeffrey Dahmer. We had all sorts of serial killers that showed up in one specific episode and it was really fun and kind of interesting for a lot of the fans to see. And before anyone leaves me the comment about Patrick James March, who was Evan Peters' character, I'm planning on doing an entire video, an entire spooky Sunday on that topic, so I'm just going to leave him out. But he was also based on a serial killer, a very well no one and he was actually based on America's very first serial killer and one of America's most diabolical serial killers. So expect a video on him in the near future. But there was one serial killer in particular that they showed in the episode who a lot of people knew was a nod and an homage to what happened in real life and this is Richard Ramirez. He was a very scary, diabolical serial killer, and I'm sure you've heard of him before. Richard Ramirez, aka The Night Stalker, and this man was not good business. He did not have good intentions in mind for people, and he would basically go around to people's houses in the middle of the night. He would break in, aka why he was called The Night Stalker, and he would beat people with lamps and beat people and shoot them and just do all sorts of horrible stuff. He killed a bunch of people. He was a Satanist, so he would make these people like swear to Satan and stuff that they wanted to to live and that they had to change their life and worship Satan if they wanted to live but he would kill them anyway even if they did say that and basically go against their morals yeah this guy was absolute garbage and he was a serial killer in the 80s and obviously he was eventually caught now in the episode of American Horror Story that he was in they basically touched on how he was living in the hotel. And this is a complete parallel to what happened in real life because Richard Ramirez in the 80s stayed at the Hotel Cecil and that's where he stayed when he would go out and do these murders, which is absolutely crazy. And a lot of people think that he was doing like satanic rituals in his room and stuff, so no good business. This is just not, not anything that we want to mess with. But I was really happy, as weird as it sounds, to see him in American Horror Story in this season because if you're going to have the Hotel Cecil, you have to have Richard Ramirez. There was also a copycat serial killer of Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, whose name was Jack Antweger, and he was caught in 1991, and he was actually staying at the Hotel Cecil as well. No one really knows if it was because he was trying to basically replicate everything Richard Ramirez was doing, or if he just chose to stay there because he lived in the area, but he did just as diabolical of things as Richard Ramirez, so he basically achieved what he wanted as being a copycat serial killer to Ricky Ramirez. Now, one other thing that is pretty interesting as well that Ryan Murphy didn't actually put into American Horror Story Hotel, but he did put into season one, which was Murder House, is the Black Dahlia. Now this is pretty interesting because there have been so many reports and so many people who worked at the Hotel Cecil and people who were in the Hotel Cecil at the time said that allegedly the last place that Elizabeth Short, aka the Black Dahlia, was seen was at the Hotel Cecil. And then next thing you know, she is dead and unfortunately, displayed out for everyone to see in the awful way that she was, as we all know. But she was staying in the Hotel Cecil and allegedly that is the last place that she was basically seen alive, which is really, really weird considering all these other things that we have stacked on top of weird and paranormal stuff happening at the Hotel Cecil. So in American Horror Story Hotel, they included a character that is only in for a very brief moment. She doesn't really have a whole lot of purpose to this story. And if you don't already know the backstory and the real life scenario, then you would probably look at this character and be like, why did they really put that in there it wasn't super necessary. So in Horror Story there is a gal named Kara and she's in the whole entire episode for like five minutes but basically she was staying on the fourth floor of the Hotel Cortez and she was unhappy with her life so she decided to unfortunately take her life by drowning herself in a tub. Now if you're familiar with the story and you're familiar with Horror Story then you know that in the Hotel Cortez once you become a ghost and once you die in the Hotel Cortez you don't leave. You're basically just a ghost there. You can come and choose as you go but you can't leave the hotel yourself. So Kara comes back as a very malicious 
ghost. But she chose to show and present herself to the people who were staying on the fourth floor in a very weird and interesting way. Now, everyone who took showers on the fourth floor, drank from the sinks, used the sinks to wash their hand, started to take note that all of the water in the fourth floor was turning out black. And when they would turn the sink on, it would come out black and it would have this weird foul stench to it. Now, a Horror Story explains that Kara's rotting, decomposing body was chilling in the tub, therefore causing all of the water on the fourth floor to essentially have her remains in it. Basically contain the water that was in her tub with her remains, which is absolutely disgusting. And if you didn't already know the real life story, then this would seem like something that they just threw in there to basically gross you out and to add a little bit more of a scare factor to the story. But once you know the real life story, you are just going to be completely mind blown, let me tell you. Ryan Murphy made a very, very subtle and tame nod to the real life story of Elisa Lamb, who died unfortunately while while staying at the Hotel Cecil. So at the beginning of 2013, a girl named Elisa Lam, who was a Canadian student, decided to come to Los Angeles to basically take a little vacation away from Canada. And she chose to stay at the Hotel Cecil. Now Elisa would stay there for a few days and suddenly she would go missing and no one knew where she was. After thoroughly searching the area and the hotel, basically from top to bottom, no one knew what happened to Elisa. Now the other residents of the hotel started to complain to the front desk and to the staff about something strange going on with their water. They complained that when they turned their sinks and showers on, the water would turn black and give off a very foul and disgusting odor. Someone even drank it and said that it tasted absolutely disgusting. So after about two weeks of people complaining about the water being disgusting and smelling bad and looking black and just looking disgusting, staff at the Hotel Cecil had to finally do something about this and get their water situation figured out. Now there is a giant water tank that is basically inaccessible to any normal person, any person who doesn't have the access key because there is an alarmed system that basically keeps people out from messing with the water tank that is right on top of the Hotel Cecil and this thing is huge huge. You need two people to open the tank, you need two people to even get on top of it, and you can't really climb on top of it because it's a rounded water tank. You're gonna just slide right off. So on February 13th of 2013, the water maintenance men go up to the top of the Hotel Cecil, and they open up the water tank, and inside they find Elisa's remains floating on top face down in the water. And this is what was causing all of the people who were complaining's water to turn basically black and disgusting because it was basically filled with human remains. Now to this day, people do not know what happened to Elisa, but there was some really, really strange, bizarre elevator footage that was released of her doing some very strange things in an elevator. Now this footage is pretty long and the stuff that you find on YouTube is basically things that have been condensed down. A lot of people think that the actual footage itself has been tampered with and there are all sorts of conspiracies and weird theories around the Elisa Lamb case. And I can do a separate video on it if you'd like to see because there is literally so much on this case involving like conspiracies with the government, paranormal conspiracies involving demons and involving playing something called the elevator game. And there's even a really strange coincidental conspiracy about an outbreak of tuberculosis that was going on in the Los Angeles area at the time, like literally around the same time that was called the Lamb Elisa outbreak, which is extremely obscure so if you'd like me to dive in a little bit further let me know I can absolutely make that happen but anyway in this elevator footage you basically see Elisa in the elevator and the doors stay open the entire time granted this was several minutes long and the doors do not close even once so it's very obscure for an elevator now you see Elisa kind of peeking her head around the corner and basically stepping out of the elevator, stepping back in. She's doing some weird hand motions, like she's motioning to someone or like she's telling someone to go away. She's doing some pretty strange stuff and people have all sorts of speculations. I mean, literally looking up on YouTube, there are so many conspiracy theories about this because it's so freaking strange. But that was the last known footage of her and the next thing we know, two weeks later, she was unfortunately found in that water tank that she personally could have never gotten into herself. Like, there's no way she could have gotten into that. Like, no way at all. So. Yeah, kind of a long story here and there's so much more to it. It's really, really interesting and terrifying and I really hope that one day we know what happened to her because the girl deserves it. I mean, I've seen her Tumblr, I've seen some of her posts. She seemed like an absolute sweetheart and I think it's really tragic that she died and that people don't even know how because obviously someone put her in there. And if someone's up there on the loose, then I hope to God they get caught because yeah, you don't deserve to be free, sir. Or ma'am 
or ghost or whoever people might think that it is, they don't deserve to be free. They definitely deserve to be caught and to be put in jail for killing this poor, innocent girl. But as you can see, Ryan Murphy definitely put a version of Elisa Lam into American Horror Story. Now, I watched the actual show itself when it first came out, which was in 2015. I knew nothing about the Elisa Lam case, and I watched it and kind of thought nothing of it. I was like, ew, that's gross. But then once I heard about the Elisa Lam case, my brain did not connect the two together. I had basically just forgotten about Kara as a character because she's only in for like five minutes. But I recently was re-watching American Horror Story Hotel and when I saw the part about Kara, I literally like crapped my pants almost. I was so freaking shooken up about it because I automatically knew, dude, that is Elisa Lam. Oh my God, he put it in here because after I learned about the Elisa Lam case, I was like, did he put that in American Horror Story? If not, he should have because it's scary and weird and it would have gone perfectly with the storyline. But I guess the reason why he didn't make it more of a central theme in this show is because I guess Elisa's family really did not want it to be... I don't know, exploited in that way, which is completely understandable. But yeah, if you've ever seen American Horror Story Hotel and you thought that Kara's story was a little bit weird and kind of out of place, that's because it's based off of a real thing. But there's honestly more that I could get into about American Horror Story Hotel. And as I said, I'm definitely gonna be doing a full entire dedicated video to one of the main serial killers who was in that season because he was definitely based off of a real person. Evan Peters is practically playing him as a character. But just stay tuned for that because that will be coming very soon. But that is gonna be wrapped up this week's spooky Sunday. I do hope that you consider subscribing if you have not already. I am doing spooky Sunday every single Sunday of course and during the rest of the week I got all sorts of makeup goodness happening here on this channel. I do also hope that you consider giving this video a big old thumbs up if you did enjoy it and you want to see more go ahead and ring that notification bell as well. But I hope that you are having an absolutely amazing, beautiful, and slightly spooky day wherever you are. And thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye!